Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome and welcome. Uh, my name's John and I'm the, uh, the guy behind the secret story draw. Uh, thanks to uh, anyone this evening who attended last night's session. I hope you really enjoyed it. And uh, apologies if this is gonna, my uh, welcome is a bit repetitive. Uh, the secret story draw is a campaign that is full of optimism and opportunity. And that has a mission to get more underrepresented ethnicities into the children's media industry, which is an industry that I love uh, and I, I'm sure we all do. Uh, firstly, I, I would really just like to thank all of you uh, for making the effort to turn up to tonight's session. I know it takes something, it's half past five, it's probably tea time, your tummy might be rumbling, uh, or you might just be wanting to watch the football. So thanks very much for, uh, for showing up. And, and more importantly, I'd like to thank all of you who've made a submission to the Secret Story Draw already. Uh, just, the, just to thank you for the time, the effort, the love and the care that you've taken to create and submit an entry for the campaign. We've been truly overwhelmed at the talent that's on display uh, and just some of the work that's been sent in is, is truly, truly magical. Uh, all of your entries are now with our wonderful judges and uh, they're, they're judging away. Uh, and we should, uh, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll know who's won what uh, very soon. Uh, we're finalising the details of the awards. I appreciate the awards haven't been mentioned yet. Uh, that's because it's, 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 it's a little bit tricky in terms of timing uh, and the platform that we may use. Uh, although I'd like to say that the, the awards will happen on July the 5th. So that's July the 5th at, at 8pm. And I will be pushing out more details about that as soon as I, uh, as humanly possible, which I, I really want to do as soon as possible. So on to this evening. So I am super excited tonight uh, to introduce the second of uh, three secret story draw sessions. Uh, tonight, we've got the exceptionally talented uh, Katri Valcamo, uh, uh, who is an art director at Jellyfish Pictures. She's a designer, a concept artist. She specializes in character, visual development and concept design for children's animation, TV shows and commercials. Catchy's work has spanned across multiple projects and departments from uh, producing, uh, from production to actually IP development and client work. Uh, I'm a big fan of Catchy. She's uh, already done quite a lot of character development uh, on, a, on a show that I've got uh, in development at the moment. So it's a merciless plug. Uh, we, one thing uh, that's great about tonight is that Last night's session was a pre-record. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed that. But uh, Katri is old school and she wants to run the session live tonight, which is a delight. Uh, so, uh, so she's going to do that shortly. Uh, on a Q&A, uh, the Q&A last night went really, really well. And many of you asked some really fantastic questions. Uh, so please do so again. I think, you know, there's no such thing as a stupid question. And quite often the questions that you ask are probably ones that other people have been wanting to ask, but maybe didn't want to. So please do that. Also, if you do post a question, try not to post them anonymously. Uh, it's always nice to know who's asked what. So uh, if you'd all like to sort of, you know, sit back, get comfortable, relax uh, and, uh, and enjoy. So I think without much further ado, uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna get the show started. So there might be a little a, a little bit of technical jiggery pokery going on just at the start, but uh, uh, Katri should join us uh, shortly. Okay. Oh, there you are. Hi, Katri. Sorry. I've been lurking in the background. Just <laughs> a big, uh, time. I had a big document in front of my uh, my screen. So <laughs> I'm not very good at ad libbing. So I. <laughs> So, <laughs> so look, Katri, look, really, really thanks very much for taking the time out. For those of you who don't know, Katri's currently uh, in the, uh, is it warm there right now in Finland? It is quite warm, uh, surprisingly. It's not frozen, actually, here <laughs> during, during summer. Um, you might expect uh, it to be frozen all year round, but it's not. It's really nice. It's really summery. It's going to be 30 something this weekend. So really looking forward to that. Some maybe some beach time or something. So yeah, it's very nice. Wow. OK, great. Well, I'm going to I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to go off microphone and I'm going to I'm going to leave it. I'm going to hand, hand it over to you. So Catherine, okay. thank you so much for giving up your time this evening. No worries. My pleasure. Um, 
Okay, let me just share my screen. Where are we? Bear with me one second. Okay. You can all see this, right? Yeah, we're all good. I can see it. So we're all good to go. Great. Okay. So yeah, thanks for the intro. That was, that was very, very nice. Uh, yep, my name is Katri. Uh, I'm a uh, art director and character designer at Jellyfish Pictures. Uh, I've been there for five-ish years now. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, I think tonight is going to be just about uh, character design and and I'm going to just type, dive into sort of a little bit of about um, uh, principles, some practical stuff, and, and it's going to be fairly packed. So, so hopefully you can get some like useful information from there to sort of like what to expect from uh, possibly working as a character designer, but also some like skills that a character designer might need. Obviously, because it's like a very sort of tight package, um, a lot, a lot of things that are useful like are left out because I can't just fit everything in. But um, hopefully, we'll give you sort of a good overview, just a good sort of start if you're if you're beginning uh thinking about like a career in character design or if you want to just like pick up some new ideas hopefully there's something hopefully there's some, something for everyone so so that's my aim and obviously if you have any questions please please uh write them down somewhere to ask me later i'm more than more than happy to to um answer any, any questions you might have or if something wasn't clear uh that sort of thing okay so there's a bit of an agenda here. Uh, at least I'm trying to, to build it up. So uh, first of all, I'm just going to go through quickly about like what is character design in general. If you're really really new to new to this, um, what does a character designer do? And then uh, we're going to dive into my character design approach, um, just sort of step by step step by step looking into uh, some of the ideas that I go through. Uh, when designing a character, when starting, like we're going to walk through like everything, uh, starting from from scratch and and what to think about at each stage. Um, so yeah, hopefully there's something something there that we can kind of dive a little deeper into, and it's going to be useful. Okay, so first of all, what is character design? So for me, um, designing characters is essentially communicating the essence of a character and obviously because it's design uh, this is done uh, visually um, and it's all, also important to know what designing means it's not usually just like drawing pretty pictures or, or drawing something just because it looks nice uh, it's cool if you do that for yourself but when you do it for a job uh, designing means that you deliberately make decisions. You deliberately make decisions about um, uh, what you include and what you don't include in the design. So nothing in the design should be there just because it's like, just because, you know, you, you felt like it, like it has to kind of come from the story and it has to kind of come from the background. It has to communicate something about the character uh, that you are designing. So it's very important that, that you distinguish sort of between something that you do for fun uh, is different from something that you do for a job, which is you need to aim for a result for someone else. And I just wanted to put like a little sort of drawing here, uh, well, a design uh, from Carter Goodrich. He's a character designer, has been working on many, many animated films for, for years now, one of my favorite character designers, just as a example of, of like how, just like a single image, like a single drawing of a, of a character, how much it can communicate, like everything about like the texture, uh, you know, the furry texture of, of this guy to like his posture, like what his job is, he probably works in an office, just judging by his, you know, the clothes that he's wearing and and also just kind of seeing like what kind of expression he has he's probably like really bored and really just like kind of 
generally fed up with life. And I can't remember exactly what this factory was about in, I think it's from Hotel Transylvania. But it was something like he had like a big family of like a million pups or something and a wife that was pregnant. And he was just like really fed up <laughs> with everything, a really tired dad. So it just really captures that. And that's really about the essence, like bringing, like finding the essence uh, of that character that, that you want to bring across, bring across visually. So hopefully that, that sort of makes sense. So all, that kind of leads into, if you've ever seen a, car, a caricature of someone, how, how in the caricature, like the, 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 great caricature artists can kind of capture something about the person that not only just looks like them, but also kind of has their personality in just like a single drawing. So here's a few examples. Unfortunately, I don't know the artist of, of uh, this one on the, um, uh, the left-hand side. Uh, forgot the actor's name, but anyway, I'm sure you, some of you might recognize it. And obviously Trump in the middle, and this is uh, all his Hearthfields, uh, drawing of Cher. Um, and it's just like, you can really see that they've captured, you know, the essence of that person. And of course, there's like, you know, many styles and many ways of doing things. Like these two, like um, uh, Hedy Smith is using like flat color style without any lines. This is like purely just line, uh, line art, but still like, the style doesn't really matter. It's, it's all about like the use of shapes, the use of uh, pushing, pushing shapes and pushing uh, the design around until it's so extreme, but not too extreme that you can still recognize it. You can still get the idea of that, who that character is and who that person is through just the visual. So that's really the magic about good character design is like being able to capture something very, um specific about a person that is like so then so so that's 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 why a lot of also like car great character designers are great or they come from uh doing caricatures uh not all of them it's not necessary but it's really really helpful so if you're starting out and even if you're you know on your way kind of building you know your portfolio or, or studying character design it's a really great way to 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 improve uh, your observation and, and your sort of skills as a uh, seeing, observing something very specific, very essential about a person. So uh, as a job title, what, is a, what does a character designer do? So they would usually visually explore um, a design idea uh, based on obviously the character description. So who that character is. Uh, in best cases, there's already also a script, so you can read something, you know, how the character relates to the story. If there's not a script, hopefully there is at least some kind of outline of like, what, what is this episode of, of the series or what is the series in overall going to be about or uh, talking about the animated TV series or, or like a feature film, like what is the feature film going to be about? Like there's usually some kind of overview if there's not a script yet. And also, as a designer, you're going to be working with a lot of people and uh, uh, very closely usually working with the director. So the director must, might, might have a vision that they want to bring, bring, uh, bring across. Um, so also taking into account like the different, you know, different people's uh, uh, sort of visions and, and, and aims for the, you know, design so that you can really listen and you really try to figure out um sort of uh, what is it that um this project needs um but that's one thing then there's the whole <laughs> other thing about it is like you know one is like listening really like taking it in like what, what what do we want to do here and the other one is is drawing it uh so infusing the designs with life uh sense of personality expression and appeal uh because no one wants to be looking at boring designs like no one wants to be <laughs> looking at designs that are like oh like I don't, I don't get it. So, part of the designer's job and the big part of it is like trying to figure out these characters, obviously like their personality, and and then trying to bring that character to life on paper so that someone else can have a look at it and go, oh my god, like that's it. Like 
I look at the character, I get it. Like there's that kind of personality and then really kind of inspires the rest of the team, really. So that's super important. Um, yeah, and then there's also, you know, understanding the visual ingredients that make relatable, engaging and memorable characters. So trying to do something always that is a little bit different than what's been seen before, something that is engaging and new. Um, and also there's, there's a whole side to this as well. So if you're coming up with, a, with new character designs, that's one thing, but also um, that there might be some like technical things that you need to figure out uh, or, or you might want to um, provide options. Uh, usually there's like, you know, multiple ways to solve a problem or solve a character design. So, so it's good to sort of have some range of like, okay, could be this style or could be this style or could be wearing this or could be wearing that. So, so that's part of the, the job as well. And yeah, like I just said, technical drawings as well. So uh, very much sort of part of the character designer's uh, job description. So, uh, and I'm going to be giving uh, examples in a moment, but just sort of, you know, showing uh, how the character works. And this is really useful for, uh, for example, in a 3D pipeline where you do 2D designs first, and then it goes to a 3D artist who actually like sculpts the character into a 3D model so that they have the information that they need to, to match the design, to translate the design from 2D to 3D is, is, is quite important. So I'm gonna show some examples in a moment. Um, and yeah, and I think essentially, <laughs> like what it all kind of boils down to is, to me is like, you're kind of a creative problem solver. Like there's always, not that the, the, you know, everything's a problem, <laughs> I'm not saying that, but it's more like sort of, there's always gonna be, you know, that creating these characters from scratch, especially like when there's nothing uh, to go with except text, except the script. You know, you, you, you're gonna bring life to these things. So I said, so there's gonna be challenges. It's gonna be like, well, if it looks like this, then it's gonna communicate this. If it looks like that, then it's communicate something else. So you're constantly like visually kind of problem solving and solving these challenges of like how to make it be exactly what it needs to be, if that makes sense. So yeah, essentially there's like a lot of things that go down here, yeah, like kind of included in the um, character designers job description, uh, if, if you will. Um, so it's not just drawing pretty pictures and pretty characters. That's nice too, if you do it for yourself, but when it's a job, it's like, you have to think of these things. So a few examples. I don't know if you've seen Mitchell's, uh, The Mitchells versus The Machines, but um, it's a really fun film that just came out on Netflix and it's got some really cool, really fun character designs that really communicate the essence uh, of those characters. And, and this is how they started. Like they started actually in 2D working out these uh, designs. And, and this I think is like one of the final designs for, for the main character, Katie. And you can really see how, how, how well her like kind of goofy like personality comes through. She's, she's a bit messy. She's got stickers everywhere. She's, she, she's a creative. She writes down, you know, like notes on her, on her hands. Clearly doesn't care about her looks. Like all her clothes are like just ripped and old and in bad condition, but that doesn't stop her. Like she's, she's like a really, sort of uh, creative and driven person, uh, as far as I can remember from, the, from seeing the film. And that all already comes through from the design and, and all of these designs will then, will then inform the rest of the production team, the 3D artists, the animators, the riggers to like create this character uh, that we then see on screen. Another example, very different style. I don't know if you've seen Klaus, but it's a really, really cool uh, film. Again, on Netflix, but uh, made by this uh, Spanish studio, I believe. Um, but yeah, in this one as well, like just exploring uh, sort of different ideas for, for a character. I, I believe this might be the final design, but there's like many takes, there's many iterations. Like the style is completely different from this to this. For example, this looks a little bit more realistic and this is like very pushed, very stylized. So it clearly like sort of went through 
a process of like trying to figure out uh, different aspects of the character and, and how the design looks before settling into the final design. Um, another example uh, from Spider-Verse, uh, again, an amazing uh, animated feature. Um, these are from Shion Kim, uh, these drawings, uh, explorations of Miles Morales' uh, expressions. So not always do you need to like draw the whole body, but sometimes it's like, you know, just expressions of the character can be very effective as well, and very informative for, for, for example, animators or riggers who want to then build the character and, and try to get those expressions um, like in the drawings. Uh, a little bit more technical one. I think this is personal artwork from, uh, from an artist uh, called Luigi Lucarelli. Sorry for butchering that name, by the way. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, and um, yeah, this is also like very much part of the designer's process is uh, when you have a finished design, like hopefully it got approved <laughs> before you move into this, this stage, but, but then you will sort of uh, provide these kind of turnarounds uh, for the team to then like, if it's gonna get 2D animated, a 2D animator would like see, okay, like these are the, propor uh, the proportions. It's got a big head, uh, sort of one-to-one -one body to head ratio. Uh, where you know what what does his like shoes look from the back, or what colors does he have? Does he have any patterns anywhere? Well, it doesn't seem so. But but basically, just giving like a really you know well-rounded good idea of 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 uh, of the technical side of the character. It could also look like this. You could be drawing. This is from Corey Loftis for, uh, for Zootopia, drawing sort of phones uh, or like how do these like characters move? Like this is super informative or must have been super informative for the team to just like uh, get the style right. Like for example, no butt cheeks on animals because it looks weird. Uh, and this is more like the way, and these are kind of the things that, you know, like you don't know until you draw it out and find out like, what is it that you know these things how are they going to move like that is the question and it's really <laughs> expensive to try to figure that out um when you're in production and you have the 3d model and you're like this is not working and it's much cheaper and much much faster and much more efficient basically to, to figure these things out in 2d uh that that then you know inform the 3d team or whatever team it might be that's taking after you uh, your work. Another one, sort of more technical uh, drawing. I think this was for uh, Batman the animated series. Um, some Bruce Tim may uh, Bruce Tim is a uh, is a great character artist, character designer um, for a two D animated show, right? So this is sort of giving an idea for the animators who are going to animate the uh, the character in two D, kind of like a model sheet. So how, how does the hand move? What kind of shapes does it make? Because obviously like if, if you know, <laughs> I mean, sure, surely like most of you are artists and, and you've got some experience in drawing, um, everybody's got a different style, right? So if you have a 2D animator and another 2D animator, like they, they, their personal styles are gonna be probably very different. Mm -hmm. So when you want to make something consistent, then a character designer, uh, would provide something like this, for example, for hands, or it could be for faces, or it could be for feet, or the whole full body of the character as well. Uh, just to sort of inform everyone, like this is how we stay in this style. And then also there might be some drawings about like, okay, this is how the style breaks and don't do this. Uh, it's essentially just like a guideline of like, okay, this is how we keep the character looking cons consistent across the, across the whole uh, series. Okay. So um, next up, uh, we can go to my character design approach. Um, this is not like all inclusive, everything that I kind of do every time <laughs> I design a character, but it's like maybe like more like the major blocks. Uh, most things that we design or I design at least like kind of go through this sort of process or at least like these are the things, the key things that I uh, like to think about um, so that I can get, you know, hopefully a good result at the at the end of the process. So let's go through these. Um, so first of all, before you start 
designing anything, it's good to start with uh, just knowing the story, knowing what you are designing. So anything that you can kind of uh, find out about the character and the characters and their relationships and their sort of uh, purpose and place in the story, are they are they the, like the hero of the story? Are they an anti-hero? Are they a villain? Are they a side character, a sidekick? Are they a mentor to the um, uh, to the main character? Are they, you know, what are they? What's their purpose? So this is like vital because, um, yeah, you you need to know who you are designing and how do they fit into the story. Um, obviously, in different uh, projects, um, it's it's not always that you get like like every bit of information, uh, uh, like sort of when you start that would be ideal but usually like um there's there's something usually uh, sometimes it's just like a brief description sometimes it's like a like a right if it's like an adaption of a book then there's like a whole book to read sometimes it's like script and and um uh, and some character stats that sort of thing so there's there should always be something sometimes it's a bit less sometimes it's a bit more um but the more you find out uh um, the better and you can always ask for more information if you don't know something so the key things at least that you should have uh, would be the name uh, age and gender of the character personality physical appearance occupation location time and era of the story so if we are in the history you know obviously they're probably going to be dressed a little different uh, if we're uh, compared to like if we're in the modern times or or if we're um, somewhere in the future so good to kind of know sort of the relative like context of where we are and and what in what time. Then also style and technique and target audience. Um, it's good to know the broader context of like who you are designing for and uh, and also like what kind of technique because uh, it's going to be very different depending uh, uh, depending on those answers. So on style and technique, you know it's. It's uh, again. It's not always decided at the beginning, depending like how soon, how early in the process of the, of of the, um, uh, how early in the process of the project uh, you're joining. If you're joining super early days, they might not know. If you're joining when the production's just starting, they probably know already. At least it's going to be two D, three D, that sort of thing. So good to just sort of get a get. A, get a general idea of, of um, what the story, uh, what the style and technique is gonna be like. Um, the target audience, also very important if you're gonna be designing for preschool, upper preschool, or older kids, teens, or if it's gonna be something else like mature audience uh, for uh, like, I don't know, like uh, if you've seen um, uh, Love, Death and Robots, like there's some very uh, gruesome, very like adult themed animation th animations there. Or it could be an all ages whole family thing or say like for an ad, it could be something very specific as well. So good to know who you're designing for. For example, uh, if you compare these two, um, if you didn't know that you were drawing, uh, um, designing something for say like a preschool show uh, or if you didn't know that you were drawing something for like say, uh, like this uh, love, death, and robots uh, kind of situation. Then I don't know. It would be really different to figure out like what kind of proportions, what kind of kind of vibe are we going for? Obviously, like with like say Flugels, or, like it's a preschool show, so it's got like very bright colors, um, simple uh, simple textures, simple kind of you know uh, settings uh, uh, in the uh, you know in the environment design, but also, you know, the characters are like quite simplistic, quite cartoony. Whereas then like if you were to design something more sort of more aimed for adults and take this with a pinch of salt, because obviously like there's like Family Guy or The Simpsons or something that is like very cartoony, but it's aimed for like slightly old, older or audience as well. So this is just a, just, just an example. So so say for love, death, uh, death and robots uh, for the witness uh, short, like the you know they have a very realistic, very sort of stylized, realistic kind of interesting mix of like 
uh, uh, mixed, mixed look going on. So it's good to know uh, that beforehand, if, if at all possible. So then now, hopefully, you know at this point <laughs> that um, what you're going to be designing, who is it going to be for, a little bit about the story and the context. So then uh, I will always go for references next uh, before I start uh, drawing anything, just because I don't trust myself to design anything cool just from out my brain. Like I need something to feed my brain with some new ideas, some fresh good stuff uh, that is out there. I use a lot of Pinterest. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm already running at like 25 minutes. So this is <laughs> gonna take a little longer than I think anticipated. Um, but anyway, it's, it's really good to just go for uh, a little dive in Pinterest or Google or wherever it is that you find it most useful. Just to find some ideas, some, you know, something that, something like, something that you might not have come across otherwise. Cause there's just like a whole world there, just like photographs of like everything that you can ever imagine. And that's all free game for you to use as inspiration for design your designs. Um, and also you don't have to stick to just, you know, references of people or just clothes like you could use anything like you could use sculptures you could use I don't know like fashion or even like uh, furniture designs could have some cool shapes and, and cool sort of ideas of like uh, uh, proportions or, or something just just it, yeah, kind of feeding your brain with like ideas that you can then take and translate into into your character and the key with references is for me is is um trying to avoid this <laughs> like as far as they look as costumes as like sort of halloween costumes or whatever it's typically kind of seen as cliche like say if you're like drawing like uh, or design like a viking warrior girl situation like this just uh oh, it's just so stock isn't it it's just like uh oh, yeah yeah, maybe not. And this is like usually, you know, the kind of stuff like you can look into series, you could look into actual like historical references. It's always good to just like dive deep and 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 sort of like, go to the source and go go find something that feels uh, authentic. If you, especially if you're drawing something um, something cultural or something, you know, these kind of things where where you want to want to just like know that you know you know drawing something that's that could be considered uh, just bad taste, really. Um, even if you then simplify a lot, like you don't have to put all this like detail in and you can mix and match as well. So you can take parts that you like, leave other ones out and, and just like simplify it. So then now hopefully you have your references and you can move into what I like to do. Um, starting a character before I sort of go and noodle with the details is actually like to start with the silhouette. So these are some like silhouette designs that we did for, for a show um, that I, I don't know what's happening with it. I don't think it ever came out. <laughs> that happens also often. But um, uh, but it's just like a really quick way. Like there's no need to like draw any faces or anything. It's just like a play with proportions kind of thing. Um, you can get like, very different results very fast and you can get them you know sent to your director and they can kind of get an idea of like the style and the general proportions and the general sort of vibe that you're going for and maybe hopefully they like something uh, uh or they like parts of something and then you can just go mix and match to the parts that, that they like and you're not spending like a million years like noodling on like a really nice eye design and then they go like oh I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And then you're like, oh, but I spent the whole day on this, and then, and then you wasted a day. So this is a really good way to start that, start that process without wasting too much time and energy on on something that might be irrelevant. Also, silhouette design is a great start because uh, because you can figure out a lot of things about the. Um, the readability of that character right from the start. So one thing that's really important in, in character design is, is a readable silhouette. Um, I'm going to show you a slide um, in a moment uh, that really 
kind of describes that but but like say for example in this one like if you didn't know it, well if i had hidden this slide i probably should have done that but but if i turn you just this like you can tell like what what the heck is going on in here like what are these things coming out of her legs like ah uh, that's just so weird but then when you pull it out you're like oh okay it's a lady with a kid oh, okay i see so how you design your silhouette is very important and you, typically you want to aim for something like this where it's clearly readable um it's just good design practice and and you want to make readable things because readable things are typically nicer to look at and people don't get so confused so so that's something good to keep in mind so also silhouettes can be very a good strong silhouette especially like can be very iconic like you can probably if you've seen these films and if you've seen you know these characters at least you can probably recognize like who, who they are um i'm not gonna go and name them all you can do that if you <laughs> if you want but you get my point it's you know silhouette is everything readability is everything so so yeah that's a that's a important thing to keep in mind, even if you sort of continue to your design process and, and end up, you know, drawing all these details and it's got like a million arms and it's got like hair growing everywhere and it's got like, I don't know, armor and stuff. It still needs to be readable. So just balancing, you know, where all the detail is and where do we see, you know, less detail, that balance, very important. Okay, so this might go hand in hand with the with the with the silhouette and basically the whole design process as well. It's like, okay, what kind of gesture are you give, are you gonna give to your character? Um, the gesture really brings the character to life. So, say for example, if you look at these designs, well, these don't look very lively. That's because I only focused on the proportions and the style. But if I would take that character further, like I would then start doing this, like really loose um, sketches of like poses. Um, these are some studies of ballet dancers. They're not exactly like character designs, but they're just, you know, there to show you how, you know, with just like a simple sort of line of action uh, going, flowing through the body, like you can create millions and millions of variations of, of, of different poses and, and really keep the flow of the pose simple. This is uh, again, like, comes back to the uh, readability of a character. It's like you want to keep it, um, the pose needs to be, obviously because they're a palette dancer. So this is a perfect example because all they do is like this flowy but poses. But if you, even if you were doing something else, like there should be some kind of um, main idea of what the character is doing that could be hopefully simplified into like a, a simple line of action that then you can build your character around and keep it consistent throughout. So, so a good way to to just sort of uh, whip out some poses and and um, and sort of build build the character's uh, personality through through the poses without spending a huge amount of time of like noodling again with details and, and just really be able to show some action and show some um, uh, gesture. And then shape language. Um, this is a super important part of uh, uh, character design. So like, what kind of shapes are you using? Um, because um, as much as character design is, is also, like like I said, the essence, you have to bring the essence of the character onto into life. Um, and that is basically done by manipulating shapes, right? So you have like different shapes on the paper or wherever you're drawing on your screen. And then you just move them around and hope that you know stuff comes together nicely. <laughs> if you know what you're doing, anyway, it should. Um, uh, and with shapes, uh, shapes are really interesting because with different shapes, um, you get different kind of meanings and connotations. I'm gonna show you a slide in a moment, but basically, um, depending what kind of shape or combination of shapes you're drawing it could mean different things like say, you know, this kind of like egg shape here for this lady, ladybird 
looks a little bit more springy. Well, you know, the legs are kind of supporting that idea, but like this, this one looks maybe a bit more stable. It's like, you know, what kind of energy does that shape have? Same with these ones, you know, this feels a little, little wider. Uh, it gives a completely different, and this is a really simple, you know, simple character as well, but all these variations that you can do with just this one single idea of, of that shape. Um, and that's done by uh, squashing and stretching them. And so if you have, you know, like a circle, if you decide that you're gonna use a circle as a base for your character, well, you don't have to keep it to like a perfect, even everywhere, just like a, you know, perfect circle, the most perfect cir circle there is, because that's gonna be likely that it's gonna be very boring. So what I re would recommend, like, how can you manipulate that, that circle? Well, you could add other circles to it, like Mickey Mouse, for example, uh, it's a circle head with a couple circles <laughs> as ears. And it's like the most iconic symbol ever. So these things are important because, yeah, just sort of how to arrange them and, and how to manipulate them. Um, and it's really fun. It's a really fun exercise as well. So basically, uh, we want to avoid this. Uh, this looks boring. At least it looks boring to me. It's um, it's called, uh, as I was on a character design um, workshop, uh, not too dissimilar to this, uh, with Steven Silver, a really amazing, amazing character designer and teacher um, a few years back, and, and he called it like the ladder. So you need to avoid the ladder because a ladder is boring. And instead, you know, what you can do, like these are all rectangulars, right? So these are all the same rectangles but pushed in different ways. And it makes, I mean, it's abstract, but it makes a completely different sort of shape, uh, character. I mean, you could call this a character. It's like it's some kind of personality to it um, that is very different and very more, much more di uh, dynamic than, uh, than this one. Same with this one. It's like there's square shapes or like rectangular shapes, but then there's also circle shapes and there's something cut out of that one. So this is, there's a million different combinations that you can do. So don't be just like stuck in, in like, oh, okay, it's a circle and a square and I will keep to that. Like, no, uh, just go out there, just play with it, have fun with it. So about the symbolism, just um, briefly, uh, like say, this is very basic. Uh, this doesn't apply in every case. And I hope that when you're gonna like do your designs and, and develop as a designer, like maybe you can break up break these ideas and, and do something very different with them because this is all just like, it's all for, for grabs. <laughs> and, and I tend to like to just like break up things a little bit. But basically the idea is that square shapes are typically, typically, um, you know, seen as like stable, strong, safe, sturdy, that sort of thing. Um, and circle uh, shapes typically give the idea uh, for the viewer of something like soft or something cute or something good. And triangular shapes are usually like if you look at like cartoons and, and animation, animated stuff in general, like typically the bad guys are somewhat triangular, like they have something triangle on them. Um, it would be lovely to see it kind of done differently sometimes, but it tends to work really well for some reason, but you know, just, just watch out for it. But yeah, typically triangles like kind of give the idea of danger, something fast, something sharp or something evil. So just as a basic idea and you should go and break these up and, and do something different. But yeah, here's just like a quick little example. Again, Carter Goodrich of how to, how he's manip manipulated this basic idea of a shape kind of like this like round blob, but like how many ways can you kind of just like overlap it, stretch it, squash it, that sort of thing. And this is like all done under all this detail. The detail is just like, it's nice, but it doesn't need it. It doesn't need it to work as a character just because the basic, the, the basic structure is so strong and so good. So another really uh, important part about character design that I always heard for sure, um, whatever possible is exaggeration. So basically exaggeration, ex, ex, exaggerating is clarifying and highlighting. So, um, so say if you have 
a character that is like angry at someone like this is kind of like okay okay I can say that but like this this is like a lot stronger right like this can really like this really feels like she's really going at someone obviously depending on the context depending on the situation it, it doesn't always need to be this extreme but just to say an idea of like okay you draw something and then you think that it might kind of convey that message that you want to wanted to convey a feeling or an or, or some kind of action that the character is taking but it's likely that there's an even clearer even more exaggerated way of doing it and usually exaggerating uh the emotion or the or the pose or the or the action that the character is doing uh is good because then um whoever is going to view it is, is going to like immediately get the idea of like sort of like oh that's the goal anyway that that the message that you want to bring uh, comes across clearly so that's that's really really good um and what helps really with the with the exaggeration uh, part is 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 kind of trying to maybe like describe the the action that you're going for with with some adjectives so you could think of you could think of a million ad adjectives but like you know if someone's like being really angry like maybe they're super explosive so what does an explosive pose look like for example so just trying to kind of color your uh your your sort of what do you call it like color your description for the action with some uh adjectives to just really like get the idea in your head of like what what you're trying to aim for and what the adjective that you were um uh or how that adjective will help you convey the action or the emotion of that character if that makes sense um but exaggerate exaggeration doesn't have to be just like you know the pose it could be also the proportions so say here like we have like a like a very basic character here and these are the two variations of this one um and this is like kind of like the ladder going on like everything's kind of like evenly apart the the nose the the mouth there's a little bit more distance here but it's kind of like uh oh it's it's kind of boring it's like you know it's just, it's just so even everywhere but as soon as you go and kind of stretch things in and out and you can use these kind of lines as guides one for the eyes one for the nose one for the mouth you can immediately get like such different re results and also like sort of the width between the eyes the width of the eyes to 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 the exterior of the uh of the, of the skull that sort of thing so yeah you can push things around and it's really fun and and a great way to just like quickly get some more exaggeration going on um construction so uh i don't know some people might like Hate doing construction I find it like really useful and a really fun exercise um, depending on the character it's going to look very different but the basic idea is that um, there's especially if you're drawing something um, well even if you like heavily stylizing something it has to be based on reality right like an arm works in a certain way or the body's you know in its whole works in a certain way so in order to make things believable and to make them feel right and not like weird when you watch it when you're watching uh, you know animated stuff or, or whatever like like an audience can really tell if something feels feels off so construction for for the design like good construction is really there to help you um kind of solidify the design in a way that you know is believable so even if it's stylized no matter like how pushed it is it could be like a square character with like square arms but at least if you have an understanding if of like the basic structure the basic sort of underlying anatomy of that character and how it works it's going to really help you you know convey that the character feels believable and also it's going to help the 3d team and the animators um or the 2D in the 2D team, uh, the 2D animators to to uh, keep the character consistent, um, and for human characters as well as animal characters, knowing at least a little bit of anatomy helps massively. Um, uh, you don't need to know like all the medical terms for everything, 
if you're interested in that, that's great. But there's like amazing books out there that are uh, ana that are teaching anatomy for artists. And it's really about like sort of simplifying the complex complex information of like, you know, all the muscles that go in the thigh, for example, or the neck or whatever. And there's like simple ways of like drawing them or like so there's ways of like simplifying them into their essence. Like you don't need to know everything. You just need to kind of kind of know a little bit and then you can already like massively improve your drawings and, and your construction and also help help sort of use it for other things like animals or or anything really. It's just like the the practice of of sort of drawing things um in a believable way in a space and how the relationships of the body work with each other if that makes sense and then color is like a whole sort of you know you could talk days about color i just have one slide <laughs> but if, if you're interested in color it's it's a really um uh yeah you can really dive deep in it with, with color but basically the idea with color is like with shapes um you can get like different symbolisms and meanings for different colors and you can manipulate that as well so you can make like red feel like red is like the good color and then blue is the bad or vice versa. For example, you know, I have here, uh, I'm sure you all know, you know, Batman and Joker. Uh, you know, what's the difference uh, with Batman, you know, kind of um, uh, monochrome color palette, like he's, you know, the, the uh, what, what is it called? the you know, he, he works at night and, and he's, you know, everything's based in this like, you know, idea of him being like a bat, a bat man, obviously. Um, and he's kind of serious and, and powerful and uh, all these kinds of things. And then Joker, uh, completely opposite, um, crazy, uh, lunatic, um, just like explosive and weird and dangerous. And he's got a very sort of, contrasting color palette he's got like greens and purples and even some orange going on in there and those are like all greens are here purples are here and the oranges are here in the color palette so you have like a triad color palette go going on which is like as you know as dis different as you can get and that's just kind of supports the idea of like his chaotic nature so you can really see these things if you watch animated stuff like they, these, uh, the colors are usually, hopefully, like very specifically chosen uh, for a very specific purpose. So, so you can look out for that and try to learn something from there and why they, why they chose certain colors for certain characters. It's, uh, it's very interesting. And then um, costume and accessories. Um, that's a super important part of a character, obviously, because usually the characters are going to be wearing something. Um, unless they're like animals, maybe they're not wearing something then. But in most cases, you're gonna be drawing some kind of costume designs and, and accessories and stuff. And with these costumes and accessories, like you can really kind of pinpoint an era, for example, like where, where are we? Are we in the 60s? Are we in the 1800s? Are we in the future? That sort of thing. Um, but also like the characters, personality, sense of fashion, sense of, you know, like where, where are they at with the story? What do they like? Um, and, you know, and it's just general sort of, you know, you all like dress in a certain way, like maybe it's more practical, maybe it's more like you really like fashion savvy. There's all these, you know, like these, the characters that you're gonna be designing, like you should be kind of thinking about, you know, what would they dress because, or like what, what kind of costume would they be wearing? Um, uh, and how does that tie into the story, if that makes sense? Because it has to support the characters, you know, kind of what's going on in their head and, and, and what's going on in the story. So for example, if you've seen uh, Queen's Gambit, uh, again, <laughs> a lot of Netflix uh, examples at this time, but like uh, on Netflix as well, but um, the story is all about this like young uh, chess, genius um and and the cool thing about her, her costume design is that not always but a lot of times just wearing something of a square pattern right 
like that this is all like you know just a nod to her you know obsession with chess and spoiler alert maybe you want to plug your ears for for one second <laughs> you don't want to hear the ending but basically when she wins the whole tournament uh of the of the chess tournament and becomes their grandmaster or whatever her costume changes into this which is like basically she's the what uh the white uh uh queen piece chess piece right like she looks like a white queen piece but just because of her costume so it's amazing how they thought of all these things and little details and how how much depth that can bring into a character so there's something that you can definitely like do with your character designs as well and, and should sort of consider what they're wearing why they're wearing it uh some you know exploration design as an example for, for a character that we designed for Dennis and Nasher. Um, obviously like there's many different ways of designing or many different things that, that a character could be wearing and going back to kind of the, the my kind of uh the slide the first slide what is a character designer's job is to also like do iterations and do sort of options or for the director or whoever is deciding on things to choose from and just go like oh okay that feels kind of nice and uh, maybe not that so um so yeah so that can be also something fun to explore when you're designing a car uh, character okay i'm very much over time but <laughs> hopefully hopefully that was that was uh interesting and useful to you guys so thank you wow uh, thanks for the talking you take us. Uh, thanks very much. Wow. Thanks ever so much, Katri. That was amazing. Uh, I hope everybody watching uh, took some, uh, there was some takeaways from that. There was so much that you covered. Uh, I mean, my biggest takeaway <laughs> was I didn't, uh, I didn't, I don't I could watch the Queen's Gambit. I think it's brilliant. I had no idea that the, uh, the uh, costume design actually uh, was all squares and then she yeah. changed it to white. That was quite a, uh, yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? The subtlety of things. So I've got, a, I've got a, I've got a couple of questions that have come in on the Q and A. Uh, I've got a couple that I want to ask uh, as well, uh, just in case people don't want to ask them. So I spoke to these uh, at the start before we we joined everybody. But uh, obviously, a lot of the people that are on here are either uh, recent graduates or looking to get into animation, or uh, you know, looking for their first break. So. Uh, it's a question I've been asking all the panelists. So, where, how did you, where did you get, how did you get your first break? What was your first job, and uh, and you know, how did you, how did you get it? Uh, well, I started actually at Jellyfish. That was my first <laughs> and only animation uh, job in the animation industry at the moment. So, I joined in 2016 um, as a uh, prop designer. So, I didn't actually start as a character designer, even though I really wanted to. But it's it was it, it at least then like it seemed really hard to get just a job as a character designer and also as a junior artist. So so um, I saw an opening for a series called Bits and Bob that was for uh, BBC um, uh, for a prop designer. So basically drawing all the items, all the props. Like it was a very prop heavy show as well. So it was like drawing a lot of just stuff that's in the environment so like and they had gadgets and all all this kind of stuff it was really fun um uh and then that's kind of that was kind of like my way in uh into the animation and before that i had worked in um uh in the games industry in a company in germany uh, where we did some mobile games and there i was doing a little bit of character design well well not maybe a little bit i did uh, quite a quite a lot of, sort of creature character design for the game, uh, which unfortunately uh, didn't ever come out. But, but I got sort of got sort of a touch into design there and there in in the germ uh, in the German company. Um, uh, I got there from uh, as a trainee, so I was still in uni, and uh, they contacted me from somewhere <laughs> and we're like would you like to come here to to do uh, uh, some uh, illustrations for us uh, and I said yes uh, and I moved to Germany and then from there I moved to London and then I joined Jellyfish uh, in 2016 <laughs> confusingly going backwards. <laughs> okay. well, that, that answer really segues in quite nicely into a, 
into one of the first questions I've got. Uh, uh, Jay Kutin, or I, I've said that correctly, or Jay Kutin, uh, he says, hi, uh, do you know if it's common or harder than normal for studios to hire illustrators, designers, or animators from abroad? So you're, you're in Finland, right? Uh, and you sound like you've traveled around a little bit. So what's your view on that? Well, I think um, it's, it's tricky. I mean, these days I would hope that, because everyone's remote, right? That working remotely from, from abroad for any studio really uh, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, of course, like there's going to be studios that prefer um, sort of uh, local working and don't, do, don't want to do remote at all. And some studios are like all remote and some studios are kind of in between. It's going to be interesting to see when we uh, when we sort of get back to normal, how that's going to look like. Um, I think in general, though, um, I'm talking pre pre COVID times, um, uh, might have might be easier to depending on the company might be easier to if you really want to sort of get into the animation and get into like an in-house position, it really helps to, uh, at least if you're not in that country, at least be willing to travel to that country and actually like work in, in, in a studio. But that's, you know, I can't say for sure if that's going to be the case in the future uh, because everyone's remote these days, so. Yeah, I mean, my view on it is I, I, I think it will, I think it's going to change dramatically. So I was on a, I was on a webinar, uh, Literally, I've been on webinars all day, but I was, I was I was a contributor to this one, and it was talking about leadership and about the just about uh, animation studios, game studios, their response to the pandemic and what that's going to look like. And there definitely is a move towards a hybrid working environment. So Blue Zoo, they've got over four hundred people uh, working for them. It's crazy numbers of people, mm. but and they hire from from all over. Uh, and Jellyfish does too. Jellyfish has yep. a uh, you know, jelly, jellyfish you work for, they hire, you know, from, from all over. In fact, Definitely. They, they, find it quite yeah. hard, they find it quite hard to find all the talent that they need in the United Kingdom. Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. That's, that's true. And now that everyone's kind of used to working remotely as well, uh, for most of the time, it's like, well, how's it going to be kind of luring everyone back to, <laughs> back to just yeah. like studio? I don't think that's going to be, yeah, that's interesting to see. Not sure if it's going to be happening. Like our art department, we're like five people. We are, there's people in the UK, uh, in London. There's people in Spain, in Italy, and I'm in Finland. So, and it's working fine. <laughs> so in the future, yeah, that's probably going to be the case. Right, great. Thanks for, that's a good answer. Thanks, Jay, for the question. Uh, Nathan uh, Adai, or Addy uh, asks, uh, how many revisions of character designs do you usually have to do for clients? I, and how and how do you adapt to the demands of multiple drafts? Okay, so maybe I'll answer the first one first. Um, so usually there is not a set number of revisions uh, that I can. Oh, well, I can't give like a set a number set number of revisions for a character because it really depends on the client and the project. Some clients and some characters like it depends. Like you might nail it. On your first drawing and they're like amazing let's do it let's go very very rarely does that happen um usually there's at least some revisions and sometimes there there can be many many revisions i've yeah i've, I've had that too where we've uh drilled down into small details um uh, multiple times so it really depends on the client the project and also just luck i suppose so yeah, you can prepare. You can be prepared for anything. Okay, and then I guess the second part of that question was, how do you adapt to the demands of that? How do you adapt to? Um, well, if you're working uh, in an in-house team, hopefully your producers will <laughs> kind of help you with with sort of scheduling things and and making sure that you you're on track, and also. Sometimes it might be, you know, managing the client a little bit as well. Like, okay, like we've done, you know, this many, like we're, we're kind of, you know, uh, done as much as we can. So it really depends on the situation. Yeah, I'm sure um, you're hoping that your art director or your producer is sort of protecting you a little bit. Yeah. From the, uh, 
let's say, I mean, I've been working in client, I've been working, I've been working client side for 20 years. So for, for everybody from Disney to E1 and uh, yeah, you just have to be, uh, you have to know when to say no. Yeah. And also like if uh, as a designer, like just, just, you know, also being <laughs> honest about like, you know, if, if someone comes to you uh, uh, like saying like, I need this many designs today, um and you're like oh i can't do that like don't say yes like say that sounds a lot to me <laughs> like i can maybe do this much is that okay and it's a conversation like you need to keep that going and yeah. it's okay to say that you know if you can't if you feel something is too much it's it's not worth for you to like stress yourself out or work like till like midnight or something like that's that's not that shouldn't be the case so so i think the key takeaway there is uh, don't be a people pleaser yeah, <laughs> very much. Just, you know, do what you can do. So thanks, Nathan, for that question. Uh, Elise asks, uh, hi, thanks for all the tips. Uh, she wants to ask, how do you make a character that has exaggerated proportions and expressions without them bordering on looking weird or uncanny? Do you have any tips on how you balance that? Oh, yeah, I think that happens. That happens all the time. And it's OK if that happens. Like if you go too far, I think it's actually better because then you can look at it and, and maybe like talk to your art director or, or the director and and say like is this too far like I feel like it is and they can go oh yeah or they can be like oh it's 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 just getting started you know <laughs> let's let's do more so it's all about like kind of finding finding where sort of the line is like where where the balance is like where do we go, where does the character break? Obviously like something too extreme will look weird, probably. Um, or if it starts to look weird, it, it could be that you pushed it too far. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, it's good to then like, if you feel like it's going too far um, and maybe, you know, and you're doing this uh, design yourself, like maybe remotely and there's no one to give you sort of advice on, on on stuff until you review stuff so so then just like kind of play around with it maybe like just take the design make a copy of it and to do another take on it and then just see like how that works then like maybe it's not you know maybe it wasn't that bad after all or maybe you managed to fix it so yeah don't don't get kind of like stuck in in a design that you did like we call it or some people call it like kind of yeah, like it's like too much in love with your designs yeah like you should be able to just throw it away yeah i think in the uk we uh well it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a grim uh, expression but you've got to learn to be able to kill your babies yes <laughs> you've got to learn to be able to do that because you know yeah otherwise because you sometimes you can just be attached to something that you just end up polishing a turd really yeah yeah, or, the, or you might really like it, but then the client is like, oh, actually, that's not what we wanted, which happens all the time. Yeah. And you can't take it personally, otherwise you're going to end up really sad, I think. Sure. So thanks for that one. Hannah asks, uh, we, uh, how do you practice drawing character turnarounds? Uh, how do I practice character turnarounds? Uh, just drawing, just practicing. <laughs> I think it helps really that... Um, that if you break down things into mm -hmm. simple shapes, kind of like on the construction uh, uh, page. So you break down, say a head is a sphere or is a sphere and like some kind of rectangle in front of it or something. And then, you know, how does that simple shape, just starting with the simple shape and rotating that and then drawing the detail on top can be a really good approach to just keeping things consistent and also just a good kind of practice of like, um drawing things from multiple angles um but in general i think you need to do a turnaround to be able to then draw another turnaround so it's good to just like start from start from doing it right cool great uh harvey norman uh he asks uh, are entry level or junior character design positions common in the animation industry or is it the sort of job that requires loads of experience in other positions uh, I would probably say it's not very common to see entry level character design uh, positions, uh, just because um, depends on the project, depends on the company, but um, it tends to be a more sort of mid to senior level skill, possibly, 
I think if um, there's there's other ways though. Like I I didn't start as a character designer. Like you could start as a prop designer or as a storyboard artist. Like those tend to be more entry level uh, jobs. Not maybe a storyboard designer, but a storyboard revisionist. And then you could potentially express interest in character design, and then you might get the chance to do that as well. Um, I would say it's quite rare to get like a trainee or junior character design role. I might be wrong. They might be somewhere. But unless you're uh, like a, you know, a junior who draws like a mid or senior, <laughs> and it might be, might be tricky to find those. Okay, thank you. Uh, we've got a few more questions. We've only got, we've only got, I haven't got that long left and there's a few more questions to go through. Uh, so Elise, she says, would you say university is essential for your artistic development? Um, like going to like an art degree degree in university. I don't think so. Um, I would say though, I know like there's a lot of artists saying like, oh, you don't need university for anything. Like just, you know, learn things online, which is great. I think that you can learn most things online these days. But the thing I think uh, people don't realize necessarily about university is like, unless you work remotely, if you want to work, um, say, Say you're from Europe and you work, want to work in the States. Um, well, not knowing so much about the details of the um, sort of relocation visa process to relocate to, to the States, but usually there's something, you know, they need you to have a degree, like there's some kind of point system. Uh, so it might be useful to have a degree just for that if you aim to work abroad at some point for visa purposes. And also for connections, I think a university is really good for connections and just as, as a time to just like experiment and do whatever you want without really feeling pressured to. Yeah, and, uh, and hang out with other illustrators. And people exactly, who... exactly. Like minded people. Sure. Uh, 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 I think it, her name is it Gu uh, Guilia Chen or Guilla Chen. I, 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 honestly, if I'm if I'm absolutely mashing up your names, I'm very, very sorry. Uh, but uh, so do apologize. <laughs> uh, she asks, uh, uh, they ask, what is the thing you struggle the most to learn about character design? And what's a mistake you often see in beginner's work? Uh, so what's something that I've, I've struggled? Was that the first part, right? Yeah, what's the thing that you struggle the most to learn about character design? Like I think for me, um, the most I struggled, uh, sort of at least when I was, starting out was getting things like getting the construction right like I feel like I, my style was like very flat and then when I needed to draw the character from another angle it was like well I, mean, I don't know how I know where to start so that was definitely tricky but I think the, the, the thing about sort of blocking things out with simple shapes uh, and cylinders and, and circles and stuff like that really helped with that um, what was the second part the second part, so I'm just scrolling down how many more questions I've got to get through. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what mistake do you see quite often in beginner's work? Um, probably, probably, uh, yeah, construction is a very common one that it's, there's, there's a nice, there could be a nice style going on. They could be, they, they could have a, like a very personal style, but, um, but it's like, well, can we can can you do the character from multiple angles? Can you draw it with different expressions? Can you draw it with, you know, running or jogging or dancing or sitting, those sorts of things, and and still keeping it consistent? Um, I think that's yeah, that's a big thing. Great, thank you. It's a really nice question from Joe Lang. Uh, hi, Katri. He says, uh, do you have any favorite exercises? you've done that you feel has helped you level up your character design? Uh, yes, my favorite is uh, uh, life drawing and doing, um, uh, uh, I might be butchering this, croquois, croquis drawing. So those like quick sort of sketches of like uh, a person in a pose and they, they might be, you know, 10 seconds, might be two, up to like two minutes. And those really kind of challenge you and train you to just like, just sit, put the, down the essential lines on the paper. I think that's been massively helpful with construction, but also getting the uh, the, the poses and the emotion and the, just communicating you, something. That help you sort of get the lines of action really 
in yeah. really quickly. Cool. Right, okay, bang. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, Ronnie, Ronnie uh, says, what has been your favourite character to design and why? Hmm. I'm not sure if I can, if I can yeah, might be an NDA character, but if I pick my personal projects, I've been slowly doing this, like, um, this, like, it's based on Sherlock's Ho Sherlock Holmes stories, and, like, I've done this, like, dog character, and I thought, if dog is like Sherlock Holmes. There's also a Miyazaki, I think, animated series <laughs> like that, but mine is a little different. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's been a really fun thing to, to design. So dog Sherlock Holmes. Great, okay, that sounds cool. What's his name? Oh, uh, it's just Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> like oh, Sherlock Holmes, I think I called. <laughs> Uh, you some sort of hilarious play on words. Yeah, I think I thought about Sherlock Holmes, but <laughs> it's, like, okay. it's not really. Sherlock, Sherlock, Bones, Sherlock Bones, maybe? Yeah, yeah, that could be. We'll yeah. that. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, uh, 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 Nandi, Nandith, so you've got our names all together. I'm going to say, sorry, I'm going to call you Nandi. Uh, hi, Katri. As you said, thank you for your presentation. It was really, really insightful. Uh, what are studios looking for in terms of portfolios in character design or props? So if you rock up to a studio, uh, what, what, do, what do studios, what are studios looking for? Well, I think for character designer, definitely a good sense of um, construction. Um, you can build a character from multiple angles. Um, mm. Variety in style. So if you have a very strong personal style, that might be uh, a challenge, unfortunately, to, to get into work in a studio, especially if the studio does work for a variety of clients. So typically you would need to, unless they're hiring you for, for your style, which is an amazing place to be in, but um, uh, you know, ability, ability to adapt to different styles, I think is, is, is good. Um, and what else? Um, examples of other work as well, not just character design. I think it's good if you at least show some interest in like, mm -hmm. you know, something else as well. Maybe just your personal art. I think it's always nice to see what else do you do, but don't make that the main part. Make the characters the, the big part. Cool. Okay. I got well, the last question is from N.A. Adiola. Uh, I'm going to try and paraphrase it uh, a little bit, but uh, he uh, he, he talks about uh, uh, thanks for your wisdom and cool pics. He says, well, when it comes to reference, to avoid other animated properties and the drawing of other people's work, he says, I believe they should just inspire me. But when referencing from real life videos like those on YouTube, uh, can that be useful so as not to make it look exactly like real movement? So, do you ever like go to YouTube and have a look at like someone dancing or fighting, sort of, other than kind of, you know, still like, like you know real life is that do you ever go to youtube for, for reference i think that's a really good thing to do actually um and i should do that more i do sometimes um but i somehow i tend to like forget it and then i google oh fighting pose in google and then you get like weird results <laughs> so it's actually really useful um to do that so anything that you feel like oh that, that could work uh, go for it yep Cool. So top tip there from uh, NA. Well done. Thanks very much. Right. Well, I think that's the last of the questions. So I just want to uh, just, again, uh, with the rest of the people that are watching, just, just really, really thank you, Katri, for giving up uh, an evening. Uh, what time is it in Finland now? It must be what? That's after eight o'clock. Um, it's coming up nine, but it's OK. That's, that's so well, not, <laughs> Are you two hours ahead, right? At the moment? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so thanks ever so much for giving up an evening. I really, really appreciate it. And I'm sure everyone else does. Uh, and it would be, it'd be great. I might connect with you after, afterwards and maybe we can talk about maybe getting another session where we can actually see you doing some drawing. Yeah. That would be, that'd be really cool. Okay. So uh, just for everyone uh, listening in, uh, this is being recorded and we're gonna, we'll drop this on YouTube on our Secret Story Door channel. Uh, a bit later I'll put out a link on Instagram to what the channel is going to be uh, and we're going to try and caption it 
uh, because uh, I think somebody on the on the uh, on the Q and A asked if it could be captioned uh, for them. Uh, so we'll we'll try and take a look at that. I think YouTube has some auto captioning that you can turn on, hopefully. So uh, that 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 will be good. Okay. So once again, thanks ever so much, uh, Catchbury, and thanks ever so much to everyone who turned up this evening to watch it. Had a really great turnout, a better turnout than last night. Uh, I won't tell Rufus that you're more popular, but uh, but but thanks very much. And uh, okay. please tune in again at 5.30 tomorrow for the final session. Uh, I mean, you know Chris really well. What can people expect from Chris? I think it's gonna be talking about um, environment design, concept art, that sort of thing. I'm not exactly sure. He's been keeping it very mysterious, but I think it's gonna be really good. He's, he's an amazing artist. I mean, we've worked together for a couple of years now, I think at least. And yeah, definitely tuning in for that. That's, that's gonna be, yeah, I think there's gonna be some real like, you know, nuggets of gold dropped in there. Yeah, he's a cool dude too. I like him a lot. Right, thanks very much. Right, Thank catch you so much. You go and get yourself a nice cup of tea or whatever it is, or, uh, you know. Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks, thanks take care. Everybody, Bye. thank you so much. Bye.